I read 20 books a month. How did that happen? Do I have some sort of book addiction? Let's find out. I'm going to do the evolution of the reader tag. It was created by Jack at Spread Book Joy. I absolutely love Jack's channel. She's just a good person. Rambly, chatty about stuff that I, I care about. My only criticism of her channel is that she doesn't make enough videos. Uh, she tagged me in her original. I was also tagged by another one of my favorite channels, Brian over at Bookish. Brian's channel has exploded lately, so I'm sure you all know about him, but if you don't, check him out. He is brilliant too. Into the tag, there are four questions where there's five tag people, uh, but they're all sort of interlinked. They sort of do that, 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 that thing. Yeah. I'm going to start with the last question, tagging people, because I want to tag some of my favorites who I am not sure whether they're being tagged or not. Uh, just cause I really enjoy, I've really enjoyed seeing this tag do the rounds lately. There are some interesting things to be said about this and it's a nice, easy video to make, isn't it? I'd like to tag Amy from booktube with Amy. I uh, just, Amy is hilarious and I just, I want to see. And I'd like to tag Ange from Ange's Book Chatter. Again, hilarious. They are two booktubers. I'd very much like to go, I don't know, out to a pub, more like into a house, but with lots of booze. Yeah. Drinking party, Ange, Amy, myself. What do you read? How has your taste in reading evolved? Growing up, my dad like as a, as a small child used to read like The Folk and the Faraway Tree, like that sort of Enid Blyden to me. And then he started to read Famous Five and then I started to read The Famous Five. And that's where my reading taste began. And then had to study the Tomorrow When the War Began, young adult books about a country that invades Australia. You never quite find out what it is. And these kids form like a resistance movement. And I really enjoyed those, those books. And also thinking back on them now, I thought it was really good how Marsden doesn't like name a nationality that is invading. So because he didn't want his books to somehow have racism attached to them. I remember reading a lot of pulpy points thrillers when I was at that, that sort of between primary and high school age. So I was a 12, 13. I was quite into thrillers and, and horror back, back then. It's not something I'm too interested in now. Uh, as I got a bit older, I was interested in more and more fantasy books. I remember hearing somebody talk to me, like a motivational speaker type person, talk to me about this guy who made a list of a hundred things that he wanted to do before he died. And on that list included like, go to the moon. Anyway, he, uh, he never went to the moon, but off his list of a hundred things, he had crossed off 96 of them or something like that. And like, go to the moon was the thing that he didn't do. And it was all about goal setting, but I was like, so like, oh, do you mean I can just write down what I want on a bit of paper and it will happen by osmosis? This is generally how I hoped the world would work, you know, be very rich. I wrote down, read all the classics. And then I'm like, mm, I don't think that if I write down, read all the classics, it'll happen. I think I need to write down Treasure Island, Wuthering Heights, blah, blah, blah. So somewhere, and it's almost certainly in a landfill now, there is a list of classics that I deemed worth reading as a 16 year old or something like that. And so I've always had that like interest in the classics from there but it took me until like in fact I was in my 30s when I'm like mm, yeah I'm gonna read some classics and that came about when I got into audiobooks and that really was the transformation as me for me as a reader because and I think this is getting into the next question it's actually getting into question three how much do you read I always had books around but I never like I would legitimately not be surprised if there was an entire year where I didn't read a book in my past. Books were like a passing interest to me. It's just a form of entertainment. And audiobooks really like got me into that. And I really would have to thank LibriVox for that because to have access to all these audiobooks for free, being in a position where at the time I was working for myself, I was uh, doing a lot of driving. So all I had to do was set up Bluetooth and I had speakers going on and I could listen to all these classics books for, for free. And that got me into classics. Uh, then when I joined booktube, I realized that, that not everybody reads classics and that there were all these modern books. Everybody's heard of David Copperfield, right? Everybody, everybody knows of David Copperfield. You've probably known about it since you were 10 because osmosis, you just learn this stuff. 
But when you think of new release books, you have to like learn that, that like Young Mungo, I didn't know that book existed until earlier this year and I read it and I loved it and it's a good book. And there are millions of other new release books like that. So definitely joining BookTube has pushed my reading tastes towards new release books and, and modern literature. I've also, I've always sort of read a little bit obsessively over a certain niche. So going from classics to modern, and like, you know, when, whenever I talk about books, I talk about Thomas Hardy and George Eliot, but when you look at my reading raps, they're not very present in it. So you wouldn't know how much I like classics. So definitely something I want to address next year, the balance between new releases and classics. But I would say when I was joining BookTube, I was very much, I like serious literature, I like literary fiction sort of stuff. And I realized that that's not true. Whenever I read serious literature, I'm like, oh really? Are you just like, you know, I just, I just can't be bothered. I want to be entertained and I want to be, I want to learn stuff, but I don't want you to sacrifice either of them. These are the two reasons I read to entertain or to learn stuff, whether that is historical events or theories or about people or to experience somebody's experience. That's all learning stuff. But also I want, I want to be entertained. I want, you know, and I find overly literary books tend to not focus on the characters and not focus on the entertainment. And it's all like, look at all the philosophy I studied at school. And great. If I wanted to learn about that, I'd studied philosophy, uh, not picking on Camus or Kafka, but yeah, that's exactly who I'm picking on there. I just like these books that I, I just feel like these are the books that I could give to any reader and they would get something out of it and it wouldn't necessarily be their favorite books, but there's stuff in there for everybody. So I was sort of talking about how my reading format changed, how I, how I went from reading physical to audio books. And when I joined BookTube, I was only reading audio books and that has definitely changed. I still predominantly read audio books. I just, and there are so many times of the day that I can't physically read a book, but I can listen to an audio book. I, 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 lit I just don't understand how anybody on BookTube who is reading more than three books a week is not doing a significant amount of that with headphones on, washing the dishes and exercising and all of these things. I think I get through three books a week taking the dog for a walk. But to go back to the question, since joining BookTube, definitely have gone back to the physical books more. But one thing I have discovered is I prefer ebooks to physical books. All these physical books behind me, you can see, which probably need a bit of a tidy up, except for this little shelf here and this one up here above it. All the rest of these books are nails. In general, I am much more likely when I want a new book to read, uh, I'm much more likely to open Libby and to browse the eBooks that I have marked as I want to read this and borrow that than I am to look at those shelves behind me and go that one. I find screen reading easier. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I just, I find I read a little bit quicker on the screen. I find it easier to read. I, I don't have to worry about the, the lighting and, and all of that sort of stuff. I'm an ebook fan. And then the last question is about how BookTube has changed me as a reader. Going into BookTube, I was reading 150 books a year and I'd never come across anybody who was reading more than that. This year, this year I will achieve 250 books and I've added 100 in my time at on booktube and that doesn't include the the stack of books which will be probably pretty close to 100 books there that i have dnf'd so i've been able to take 350 books off my tbr this year granted a lot of them came on for the briefest of moments for me to just read them instantly but there are so many people getting you excited about books but also you want to talk about books that you're excited about. When I finish a book and it's a three-star read, I gotta tell you, if you see me do a book review for a three-star read book, either I'm being a sellout and I think that that's gonna get me subs, or there's something really weird in that book, such as Livonia by Atessa Mosfred, which just has to be discussed because, you know, most of the books I'm talking about, I either really liked or really hated. And you know, if I'm doing a single book review, I, I want to talk about the books that inspire emotion. I think that every booktuber is like that. So when you watch 
booktube people don't talk about the average books unless they're doing a rap but you just you get so excited and you watch more booktube by becoming a booktube channel because you just do this is um this is the end of the tag this is a bit of a rambly video uh this is not my usual style but i'm working on a couple of bigger project videos and i've got a couple of things on this week so and i just i find this tag such an interesting tag so i've watched a bunch of these tags and i've never had anything to say other than i found this really interesting so if you don't have anything to say and you just want to say that you're here just um leave me the weirdest emoji that you can find that that would that would make me happy subscribe for more book recommendations bye bye